it's Kasha Gage and welcome back. Today I'm excited to share with you my starting place for my 2022 December Daily Album. Some of you may know if you've been around here a while or for those that are new here, I am not team foundation pages. Uh, what foundation pages are is essentially already kind of crafting your page, you know, making some of those design decisions or doing all the creative and crafty things before you even start on this album. Uh, in years past, what I have found is that every time I would do foundation pages, I ended up not using them. Um, and I think that's for a couple of reasons, partly because, you know, I just changed my mind. Uh, another reason is because my photo, my albums are very photo driven and you know, the photos for me dictate the story and where I found the foundation pages to be limiting. But this year, excuse me, I decided to try something a little bit different just to step out of my comfort zone and do some foundation pages. Now these, what you'll see are pretty loose here, but I have made some design decisions. And I'm sure I will probably repeat myself many times that I haven't made that decision necessarily yet, or I am going to wait until that day between either my words or my photos to dictate the direction I ultimately take. All right, so let's dive in here. I am using a 10 by 8 album this year. I used one last year and absolutely loved it. It was something a little bit different, just kind of that way to keep it almost fresh, if you will. Plus, I loved, loved, loved the big photos. The album I am using is a 10 by 8 gray linen album from Allie Edwards. Okay, so uh, I am going to say I apologize for the speckles of light here. It's pretty crazy, our light here in California and in my office, and it just keeps going back and forth. So this is some of the best I can do, so we're going to roll with it. For me, opening my album, I personally like to start with a full page photo. And in years past, I've done this where maybe I have a transparency on top and then a full page photo, or it's a piece of vellum and then the full page photo underneath. I I just love it. It kind of sets a little bit of the tone for me, or maybe it's one of my favorite photos. Something just to represent me, us, our season, just kind of that signifier for what it's about. In Instagram, I originally or previously shared my opening page, and it had a different transparency. It was part, I used the digital that was part of the 10 by 8 specialty pack, and it said all things merry and bright. So I printed that out on my laser printer and ran it through my mink machine. I ended up changing my mind and used the text that was from this journal card that says, and to all a good night. This card was included in the main kit. So I just, in Photoshop, I ended up taking this these words and put it on that existing transparency. Again, ran it through my laser printer and then minked it. It's not perfect, but I'm okay with that. I'm gonna leave it. So here's our family, a family photo. If you want to see some behind the scenes of this, I do have this shared as a highlight in my for my Instagram stories. Okay, so you'll also see here I have lots of post-it notes, things just kind of tucked in, some of my ideas, and I'll even go further and explain some of those ideas. For the inside, I'm considering either a photo of the three of us. Or it'll be a triptych. So you have one, two, three, you know, a photo of myself, Ben, and our dog, Henry. Something is going to go there. For story one, what I've done here is adhered one of the canvas patches. This is from last year's collection, and I believe it was an add-on. I don't think that was part of the main kit. But I have a couple of these left over from last year, so I just went ahead and adhered that to the pattern paper with red line tape, and then I've tucked in a couple of things. This quote card, Let's Tell December Stories Together, was part of, it came, you know, it was a promo card that came, I think, with one of the story kits or stories by the month earlier this year, and I just have had that saved knowing I wanted to use it somehow. So what I'm thinking for my story one is that writing a letter to December or writing a letter to Ben, one thing that just came to my mind yesterday actually as I was flipping back through this was maybe Ben and I each write a letter then to each other and those can get tucked in here. Another thing I did test out and pull over 
Allie Edwards released a new digital kids kit this year and it's super fun. There are also, as much as you have the journal cards and the embellishments, there are also some large uh, pieces of pattern paper or this interview. And those are six size six by eight or maybe seven by eight and a quarter. But I went ahead and took this one that says festive fun holiday interview and tried printing it on a four by six. Now you can probably see here, maybe my camera will focus. The font is very small then. Uh, so I could only imagine years to come, I would have to be holding that up very close to be able to read it. But one idea I had was that Ben and I both fill this in. And if it was, you know, I would type it up on the computer for our answers or maybe print it out for the six by eight and fold it over. But I think where I'm more so leaning to is us each writing a letter to one another or us each writing a letter to December. I always look for and love opportunities to bring in another voice in my album. I've pulled over one of the black felt numbers with the gold stitching and then a canvas uh, word, canvas word phrase, I think is what they are called, that says this magical season. So that's kind of what I'm envisioning for story one. Story two, no idea yet, but just giving myself the real estate. If I want to do two, uh, excuse me, a full spread photo here, if I want to do a photo in words, just, just leaving myself the room. Same thing for story three. It could either be two full pages or a photo in journaling. It's, as I said in the beginning, a lot of this or a lot of how I've approached December dailies in the past are very photo driven, photo and story driven at the same time. So that what that means for me is, you know, having this room is great to allow me that flexibility and still give me that room to, if you want to call it, create how, what I'm comfortable with or what I'm more prone to do. One thing I do have tucked in here is a one through three uh, journal prompt paper, and this was part of the number scrapbook kit. I've tucked this in here. I really like the fact it already has one through three. You can just add my journaling, a photo over here. I'm not sure if I will end up using that, but at least I've included, included it here for when the time comes. On the back side, a story I'm already thinking for story four is the real tree. Now, for us, we get our real tree normally the end of November. And I'm okay with including stories from November or something say that happened on December 5th. Maybe I use it for story 12. I'm not married to the idea that what happens on that day has to be documented on that day. Some of it just depends on where it can fit within my album. So if this is a backside of a seven by eight and a quarter, then this side would be a seven by eight and a quarter. Another thing I'm thinking for my story four is to use this Mary and Bright, Mary and Bright Moments journal card. This is a four by four part of the main kit. I'm thinking maybe I want to do this, just this one journal card on a piece of vellum or a photo or a transparency. I'm also thinking it might be kind of fun to do say a total of maybe not four journal cards, but four. Uh, so maybe you have a shaker pocket here with the number and then the journal card and a couple more photos on the back. Some of how my mind works is I think, okay, number four, sometimes I want to signify that with either the embellishments or say for instance, the homes for my words or photos. So I just have that tucked into a page protector for now. Uh, as it stands, I am not planning to use any page protectors in this album. Everything will be outside of the page protector, sized 11 by 8 and a quarter, or I'll have some smaller sizes for maybe 7 by 8 and a quarter or 4 by 8 and a quarter. And that is, that's my personal decision. Uh, everybody, everybody gets to choose their own path in this album. For story five, I have, let's see, several things tucked into a page protector and a couple of things already cut out. Another prompt page that was included in the number scrapbook kit was the one through five. Let me count the ways. And what I am planning to do for this come December, I could, of course, this is always one I could write beforehand, but is to talk about or tell the story of reasons why I love December. I loved that this, you know, this is great. You could do reasons why I love you, 
reasons why I hate this, <laughs> reasons why we celebrate this or don't celebrate this, lots of ways it could go. So I've cut this out. I created this custom title uh, in silhouette, in my silhouette. I created it in Illustrator and then ran it through my silhouette. And then I just plan to adhere that behind or stitch that on. And I did it so it's backed. You just flip the image so that way it, uh, I can back it and it's also in gold. And then on the back side, I'll most likely have a photo here. A couple of things I'm considering for the front is doing a peekaboo, so a see-through element here. So if I have a piece of patterned paper, I'm considering using the nested chipboard circles. Maybe my number is dangling through. Maybe it's a shaker pocket with the number. Maybe it's just a couple pieces of vellum. Haven't, again, decisions I haven't necessarily made at the moment. We'll just kind of see when I get towards when, I, when we start getting into December. But I've pulled over a couple pieces of pattern paper, some reds, some greens that I think might go nicely. And again, part of how I am making some of these decisions will be dependent upon the previous page. But I'm at least pulling out my supplies to help me when that time comes. A couple things I've also pulled out are these chipboard frames. This black one is from the Stories of Christmas Past kit, and this green wood grain one is from the History kit. I'm excited. I hope, I hope this page comes, comes together the way I'm envisioning it to do so. All right, moving on to story six. I already have trimmed one of the papers that was part of one of the paper packs, we'll say, this year, and it has the word remember. This, again, was... 11 by eight and a quarter. It's just over 11 inches, I believe, actually. But I trimmed this down to seven by eight and a quarter. In hindsight, I probably would have liked to have given myself a little bit more margin on the left-hand side for where the holes go, but I'm rolling with it. I'm just gonna use it. And what my plan is, is to stitch this to a piece of vellum. This is vellum from last year's specialty paper pack. You can see it has the holly or the evergreens. Some of them are in gold foil and the berries. Oh, just like that you can see through a little bit to my words. And then on the back side, I will do a photo and maybe more journaling. And my words here are pretty much already done. I could add more if I feel I want to add more, but I like that this page is already prepped. If you participated in or have had a chance to watch through all the different lessons of this year's prep day, Allie had a live challenge to do a full page of stamping. Loved it. Love the chance to get out my stamps. More often than not these days, I do things digitally because it just is so much faster or I like the precision of it. But excuse me, there's something great about having it be that little bit of homemade or imperfection in this album. As you can see here, what I ended up stamping out, this time of year, I get nostalgic. There's something about decorating the tree and watching classic Christmas movies that makes me feel like a kid again. Here's to creating and capturing the magic. Don't know if I'll end up embellishing. I could potentially see a canvas strip here or a couple of stars. We'll get there. Progress, my friends, progress. Okay, story seven, I have then the backside of that pattern paper, and I've put in one of the half circle die cuts. This is the one that says, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and it's repeated. What I am thinking is that whatever photo is gonna go over here are my stories, uh, but then on this half circle, I will do either a photo and my words on the back, or vice versa. Just tucking that in there so I know ahead of time that is what I am planning to use for story seven. On story eight, I have been playing around with, or I should say I had the same idea as far as Allie of using frames or doing some type of cutout of the page of the number eight. In product play this year, one of the lessons Allie shared was using these nested chipboard circles to create the number eight, to create a frame. I have gone ahead and pulled over the supplies that she specifically used, but I have to think this through a little bit more, especially because of what I have planned for story nine. So maybe I will do cut out eight on the page of a pattern paper, or maybe I will end up scrap lifting hers. But at least I have these 
for when I am ready to dive into story eight. Story nine, I plan to use this pattern paper that had the gold foil outline of the word joy. I already have a silhouette cut file set up for this specific story. I'm not gonna share this here yet, but you will we'll see that later in December. Moving into story 10, one idea I have right now is for this to be a day of documenting gratitude. Gratitude is one story I come back to again and again, or I should say I tell year every year. Uh, this page over here is from the digital kids kit this year. This was a four by six journal card. So I just enlarged it in Photoshop to be an 11 by eight and a quarter. Now my plan is to change this title. It'll say something gratitude or thankful for this or thankful for all this. Um, well, and I'm probably going to type my journaling as well. So I'm not too concerned about making sure this is already set up so then I can handwrite it. But my plan at this time is to end up typing my journaling in. On the back side, uh, and, and also moving into story 11, I have just a note, filler photo or pattern. We'll see on how many photos. December 11th, we do have a Christmas party. So I'm already thinking I really want to use this die cut. This I cut out of my silhouette. I use a digital file. This was part of the cardstock inserts this year. You can see it has the lyrics, the party's on, the feelings here. That only comes this time of year. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Love that. Uh, really makes me think about the party, and I know it's going to be super fun this year. It's a pajama Christmas pajama party, uh, but that will be that will be great for this. I don't know if I am going to repeat stamp all over this, maybe do some embossing. Maybe I will cut this out of a different color cardstock as well, maybe gold. I'm waiting until story 11, day 11, that party happens, because that will also help me make the decision for where I want to put my photo and the words. It's also possible that for me, this, this, these song lyrics could be my journaling for the day. Who knows what's going to happen. For story 12, I have reserved space for another full page photo. And what I'm thinking right now is I want to use this circle die cut or circle window die cut. I, I, I don't know the correct word for this, but this how about we'll just go with circle die cut page? And it's great, or why I'm especially thinking for 12 is because you have six on the front and then you would have six on the back. Now, last year I did use this same die cut. It was in a different pattern paper and then paired that with a half circle. I am completely okay using this die cut page again this year. And if I do use it, it will be, try to come up with a different, design probably. A couple other ideas I've been thinking about is maybe using some of these transparencies that were part of the 3 by 8 transparency pack and stitching them together. Uh, part of why I'm also liking the idea of the circles is because for story 13 I'm thinking I want to do a full circle page. And what I've gone ahead and pulled out for story 13 are a couple of the felt circles. Uh, these I just have sitting in the page protector at the moment. These are sized four inches. I love them. They're one of my favorite things from the main kit this year, probably just because circles are my favorite shape. Not sure if I will do a full page of circles, maybe 13 circles, a combination of photos and these pockets and some of the nested chipboard frames, uh, any other circle embellishments, but at least it'll help me make a decision when I get, when that time comes. The backside for story 14, what I'm thinking right now is doing a story of joy. This is also from the paper pack this year, or this was in the main kit. Uh, there are a couple different places where this pattern uh, does show up this year, but it does have the gold foil outline of the tags, which is super cute. Maybe I will do photos on here. Maybe I will do my journaling on here. Maybe I will do shaker pockets. Maybe I will cut them all out and do something on the backside, right, of story 13. 
I know I want to use that, so I'm putting it there. Again, the things that I know I want to use, I am putting it front and center for myself and trying to help me make those decisions faster. Story 15, an idea from prep day this year. Allie did a page of three stockings and there is a silhouette cut file. There is a PNG. I believe there's a PDF to be able to cut this shape out. I've gone ahead and cut my stockings out. I have not stitched them together yet. Some things I will end up doing in the weeks to come. And I also am okay with Maybe on day 15, I do pull out my sewing machine. What I'm envisioning for story 15 is to be a story of loving. And each stocking will represent Ben, myself, and our dog, Henry. And then tuck in a three by eight journal card into the stock, each stocking, and it'll have one through five of what we are loving. I'm also thinking I want to do a photo strip in each of our stockings. So one photo strip, We'll have five photos, again, for each of us. I'm looking forward to how that one is going to come together. Story 16, I know I want to use this plastic word that said twinkle. This, again, is from the main kit. Thinking this could be a great opportunity to tell a story about the lights or outside or the light shows we've gone to or on our porch. Story 17, the only thing I have done for this is I've pulled over a paper from my stash. This is one I found at a specialty paper store here in California. It's pretty much the equivalent of rice paper or almost like a tissue paper. And I don't know if you guys can see this very well on the screen, but it does have gold flecks of thread weaved through. And there's also some actual like regular thread weave through it. It's very pretty in person. So that is what I am planning for my story 17. Again, it could be a pocket. It could be a bunch of embellishments or die cuts or a photo on that. Story 18, uh, idea also prep day. Allie had made a page, I guess a pocket page using felt. And there is a digital download for these tags that has a would you rather, like a this or that. I went ahead and made my pocket. I believe hers was sized to the outside of the page protector, so that way it could hold all of the tags for all her people, right? Now, it's again, just Ben and I, so I didn't need one that big. I did go ahead and add a couple of things. Uh, the fa-la-la plastic word that was from the main kit, I stitched that directly and added a canvas uh, word phrase on there as well. And that was with red line tape and that seems to hold it up great. These, my holes are a little off. I already know I want to change out the paper, but I'm okay with that because I know also for this would be what story 18. I'm planning to either include black and white photos of each of us or to do repeat stamping of our name on the backside. Moving into story 19, what I have tucked in here is one of these die cut inserts and this has the it's in gold cardstock jolly happy peace merry joyful twinkle what my plan is to do then for story 19 is to use a piece of pattern paper this is black with gold foils what i have left over from already using and to either adhere that down together or to stitch it and then I'm thinking on the back side will be where my words go. There's also a possibility I may use vellum with this. I might have my photo go directly on this and maybe the back side is just the pattern paper. We'll see when we get to story 19. For story 20, I have uh, Bah Humbug tucked in. I don't know if that will come up for us this year, but I really love the scale of this. This is nice and big. Let's see how tall this really is. It's about five, four and a, almost five inches, about four and a half, 4.75, almost five inches. And this also goes about six inches wide. But I love the scale of this. This could be great right on top of a photo and journaling down below. This could be great you know, tucked in and journaling goes all around it in an embellishment or the number here. So just a couple ideas I'm thinking of in advance for when that comes up. And again, I don't know if 
will end up using it. I say will, I will end up using it, but I love the skill and I'd love to be able to use it. Story 21, I've already gone ahead and cut a couple windows out through my silhouette. These, uh, it's great because it creates these little windows. I just repeated myself here. Uh, what I am planning to do is to have one of these transparencies that fits in behind it. And I don't think I have like a good dark color here, or solid color where you could see, but it says here we are as in the olden days, happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. Absolutely love that. And my plan is to pair it with the journal card that has the phrase or the prompt gather together. And that part's in gold foil. A couple of things I'm considering is, let me just set that to the side, you know, maybe I have a photo here. Maybe there's an embellishment here and a photo goes here. Uh, just a couple ideas I'm tossing around. We'll make the decision when we get to story 21. Story 22, again, that blank space that leaves me room. And I've also done that for story 23. Going into Christmas Eve, what I have tucked in here right now is the heart die cut that was this released this year. Excuse me. I also pulled out this heart die cut that was from last year. And at first I was thinking I could use both of them, but they're not the same size. They're different shapes. So it probably, because when you flip it over, it won't look quite right now. If they were, if I could figure out a way to layer them, that might be kind of cool. I don't know yet. Just talking out my thoughts with you guys. My plan for this is to do a shaker pocket. And maybe I will keep this pattern. Maybe I will cover it up. Maybe it will be the photo with the shaker, but I'd really like to do the front with a shaker pocket. And again, the backside could be my photo or just my words. It'll depend what our Christmas Eve looks like. I went ahead and tucked in that transparency I had, was previously using for my front page, but I just moved it towards the back. There may be an opportunity to use that again. I'm not quite sure. And for Christmas Day, my part of my last story that I'm envisioning here is using this die cut, circle die cut. This is have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Part of what I'm thinking, and you can see my little sketch here, is that it will be a half circle page. So you might have the photo here and then this uh, die cut where they're adhered or stitched together, or it could be patterned paper, or it could be vellum. And then on the back side, it could be maybe all one photo, it could be all one photo all the way across. It could be words and then the photos. I don't know how many photos I will take for Christmas. Typically, uh, it's less than it is throughout the season. And part of that just being because it's just my husband and I, although I do pull out my tripod to make sure we get, I get both of us in the frame. But it's usually maybe anywhere between, you know, two to 10 photos for Christmas. And I don't feel that I need to include all of them for Christmas. And part of that is because I also document project life in December. And I include a bunch of my leftover photos or my extra photos in those spreads. The last thing I have tucked in here is this really large plastic circle. I have been hoarding this. I believe this was from the uh, 2020 release that was part of the main kit and I love the quote that is on here by Morgan Harper Nichols it's a six inch circle I would love to find some way to use this now it being plastic it is a little bit harder to adhere to a transparency because you would see the red line tape of course I could try to finagle my tiny tatcher on there this could be great on a photo or pattern paper just thinking about I want to try to use this some way. So making sure to pull out all my favorite things. That is a look at where I am at. This is by far the most prep or decisions I have ever made before December 1st starts. And I know I will probably work on these pages some more, do the stitching and assembling and make some of those decisions, make some more of those final decisions. So it'll definitely set me up. Excited to try something new as well this year. Really looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this album. Really excited. And that just, that feels good. 
that is a look. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. In December, I hope to include a few process videos. I'm not sure that's gonna happen for every single layout, but I will try to do a few process videos as well, and that will be shared here on YouTube too. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more videos like this. And I wish all of you a wonderful holiday season. Take care.